Understanding Silica in Construction, hosted by Core Safety Group. What is silica? Well, silica is quartz, and quartz is naturally found in almost all rock, sand, and soil. It's also found in concrete products and brick. Sometimes it's found in sandblasting grit, and it's called silica sand. Silica health hazards. A lung disease called silicosis is caused by breathing of dust containing silica. The dust causes fibrosis, or scar tissue, formation in the lungs. This reduces the lungs' ability to extract oxygen from the air, and there is no cure. Symptoms of silicosis. Early stages go unnoticed. Continue exposure results in shortness of breath during exercise. It can also progress to bluish skin on the lips and earlobes. Workers can also experience loss of appetite. Prolonged high exposure can lead to extreme shortness of breath, chest pain, dry cough, respiratory failure, and even death. Other health effects. Silicosis can lead to susceptibility to other lung diseases and infections such as tuberculosis. Acute silicosis may develop after very short periods of high exposure. Chronic silicosis develops after many years of lower levels of exposure. Silica exposure limits. Is there a safe limit for silica? The safest amount of silica in the air is zero. OSHA's current action level is 25 micrograms per cubic meter. The legal limit set by OSHA is 50 micrograms per cubic meter. The legal limit by OSHA is called the permissible exposure limit or the PEL. As a rule of thumb, if dust containing silica is visible in the air, it's almost always over the permissible exposure limit. In the construction industry, for each employee engaged in a task identified in OSHA's Table 1, the employer shall fully and properly implement the engineering controls, work practices, and respiratory protection specified for the task on Table 1, or use the alternate exposure control methods and must be able to prove employees are not exceeding the permissible exposure limit, which is 50 micrograms per cubic meter, by providing exposure assessments, air monitoring or objective data, sampling analysis, reassessment of exposures, employee notification of results, and methods of compliance. The use of OSHA's Table 1 seems to be the simplest option for most employers. What is Table 1? Table 1 matches 18 common construction tasks with effective dust control methods such as using water to keep dust from getting into the air or using a vacuum dust collection system to capture dust. In some operations, respirators may also be needed. Employers who follow Table 1 correctly are not required to measure workers' exposure to silica from those tasks and are not subjected to the permissible exposure limit. So let's look at an example from Table 1. For handheld power saws, if workers are sawing silica-containing materials, they can use a saw with a built-in system that applies water to the saw blade. The water limits the amount of respirable silica that gets into the air. In this example, if a worker uses the saw outdoors for four hours or less per day, no respirator would be needed. If a worker uses the saw for more than four hours per day or any time indoors, he or she would need to use a respirator with an assigned protection factor of at least 10, such as a NIOSH certified filtering face piece respirator that covers the nose and mouth, sometimes referred to as a dust mask. Silica and construction activities. Construction jobs involving silica include abrasive blasting, also known as sandblasting, crushing, loading, and hauling of rock, sawing, drilling, chipping, and hammering of rock, concrete floor grinding and polishing activities, earthwork and rock crushing, masonry or concrete building demolition, road construction and repair, and dry sweeping of construction dust. Sandblasting. Sandblasting with silica sand creates extremely high levels of silica dust. Sandblasting on concrete with any kind of grit produces high level of silica dust. Sandblasting always requires the use of a respirator. Power saws, 
such as portable and stationary saws, are very common on construction projects. As you can see in these pictures, large amounts of dust can be produced from stationary and portable saws without the use of water. With the use of water or dust collection systems, respirable silica dust is contained. Walk behind and drivable saws are also very common in the construction industry. As you can see in these pictures, saws used without water or vacuum systems create high levels of dust, and those used with water or vacuum systems limit the amount of dust exposed to the worker. Hand and stand mounted drills and doweling machines also are used on construction projects. Again in these pictures you can see when these drills are used with water and without water. Also note the picture in the upper left corner. This is not the proper way to use the ladder. OSHA's Table 1 also addresses vehicle mounted drill rigs. Typically in construction when a drill rig is used workers have to approach the drill rig to do their operation, thus exposing them to airborne silica. Jackhammering and chipping tool operations also create large amounts of airborne silica. As you can see on the pictures on the right, both water and vacuum systems can be used in conjunction with jackhammering and chipping tools. Handheld grinders for mortar removal, also known as tuck pointing, creates large amounts of airborne silica. When workers are performing these operations, they should use vacuum collection systems and respiratory protection. Handheld grinders, not for mortar removal. When using handheld grinders for cutting, sanding, and polishing operations, workers should use dust collection systems and respiratory protection or tools with a water delivery system. Walk behind milling machines and floor grinders and polishers also create large amounts of airborne silica. When performing milling, grinding, and polishing operations, equipment should be equipped with vacuum collection systems and workers should use respiratory protection. Housekeeping. Avoid dry sweeping and use of compressed air on concrete when performing housekeeping operations. Both these activities can stir up large amounts of dust. Use a vacuum with a high efficiency particular air filter, also known as a HEPA filter. Fans for general ventilation. Avoid using a fan as it may stir up dust and keep it suspended for long periods of time. However, a fan may be used to exhaust the area and force the dust to the exterior of the building or work area. Respiratory protection. Keep in mind, your company must have a written respiratory protection program if workers are required to wear respirators. Also, workers must undergo a medical evaluation before wearing and using respirators. Before workers are allowed to use respirators, they must also have fit testing to ensure proper fit of the respirator. Also, training is required if workers are required to wear respirators. And last but not least, ensure proper respirator selection and assigned protection factors are correct for the type and duration of the task. Respirators. Respirators must fit properly to prevent leaks around the edges. Fit testing must be done before first wearing a respirator. Also, beards are not allowed when wearing a respirator. Training. Training is required by OSHA for anyone who wears a respirator. Employers must offer medical exams, including chest x-rays and lung function tests, every three years for workers who are required by the standard to wear a respirator for 30 or more days per year. What else? Regardless of which exposure control method is used, all construction employers covered by the standard are required to Establish and implement a written exposure control plan that identifies tasks that involve exposure and methods used to protect workers, including procedures to restrict access to work areas where high exposures may occur. Employers must designate a competent person to implement the written exposure control plan and restrict housekeeping practices that expose workers to silica, such as use of compressed air without a ventilation system to capture the dust and dry sweeping, where effective, safe alternates are available. Written Exposure Control Plan 
On the right, we have a sample of a written exposure control plan. Requirements for the plan must include the name of the company, the competent person, the description of the task, control description such as controls, work practices, and respiratory protection, housekeeping, and how to restrict access to work areas. Worksite control measures. Examples of worksite control measures include use of water, use of ventilation, use of other materials such as alternate material for sandblasting, perform immediate housekeeping, use respiratory protection, barricade the work area with plastic to contain the silica from exposing others. You can also perform activities at alternative times such as night shift to keep from exposing other trades. Tools. Tool manufacturers are now jumping on board with OSHA's silica standard. Tool technology is improving. Tool manufacturers are now including water delivery systems and vacuum systems with their tools. However, a lot of these tools are now very expensive. Review your operations and consult your local tool provider for demonstrations. Where to start? Well, I would advise you to spend some time on the OSHA website and become familiar with 29 CFR 1926.1153. That is OSHA's new silica standard. I would also advise you to become familiar with Table 1 and understand the task involved. Another good resource is OSHA's fact sheets and other resources they have online. OSHA's website for the silica standard is www.osha.gov forward slash silica. You can also contact Core Safety Group. Core Safety Group can help you with training, safety policy and procedure development, the creation of a written exposure control plan, and job hazard analysis. You can also contact industry groups and associations such as the Associated General Contractors or the AGC, the Associated Builders and Contractors or the ABC, the National Safety Council or the NSC. You should also identify the tasks your workers perform that have the potential for silica dust exposure. Compare those exposures to task in Table 1. Table 1 lets you know how to comply and if you can't comply, you'll need to perform air monitoring to determine your exposures. In review, there is no safe amount of exposure to silica. Use OSHA's Table 1. Use water or vacuum systems to help eliminate dust exposure. Use respiratory protection as required. Avoid sweeping and use of compressed air when performing housekeeping. And train your workers on silica. Establish and implement a written exposure control plan for tasks involving silica. Designate a competent person to oversee the exposure control plan at your job site. Offer medical exams including chest x-rays and lung function tests every three years for workers who are required by the standard to wear a respirator for 30 or more days per year. Contact Core Safety Group if you have any questions or need help in the development and implementation of your silica plan.